There's this really successful business guy who's openly gay and he's in a relationship and he seems to be having a really happy life except he has one big problem. He hasn't told his parents about his sexual orientation. Also what's interesting is that his parents they live in Taiwan and they still seem to be controlling him from thousands of miles away. They set him up with this dating program to find the right woman and things get even more complicated as this lie continues to get bigger and bigger. This is 1993's The Wedding Banquet, directed by Ang Lee. Yes, the same director of that gay cowboy movie. I uh, recently made a retrospective uh, video about that if you'd like to watch my Brokeback Mountain video. I would like to talk more about Ang Lee in a little bit. The general idea of what happens without giving a lot away is he decides to have a mock wedding with a friend of his who needs a citizenship card and they decide to do that and his parents are so excited about this that they decide to fly over to America to, to be part of the wedding and then when they decide to do that things get really even more complicated. And the decision to do this was kind of really quick in my opinion. They kind of like just go with it without thinking too deeply about the potential consequences but that's that's kind of the conceit of a, of a movie sometimes. sometimes things are kind of overlooked when they wouldn't be in real life. But this film is very much about tradition versus progress. It's a theme that I dealt with in my very first feature film. Um, not directly similar to this, but there are some similarities. And it's that this idea of this generation gap, this idea that, that parents sometimes have these preconceived ideas of what they want their son or daughter to be. You have a child that's a male and you expect, oh well, he's going to be attracted to, to females. Or, or you have a daughter and you expect her to find a, a man someday. And that has always really bothered me. And what's wonderful now is that we're having conversations like these. We're having more education uh, for parents to realize that, hey, you may have a son or a daughter that may not be heterosexual and it may, may and even the transgender thing that's being talked about now that you may have somebody realize that they're not that gender later on and it's important as parents to be open-minded and that's really what the wedding banquet is all about not to get too too personal but this film really resonated with me especially somebody who comes from like a portuguese heritage um, there are some similarities and especially generations when when people are much older they, they might have been raised in a place where, you know, they didn't even know what gay was or that wasn't even a possibility. And so it's going to take some time. And I know there's a, there's, a, there's a feeling of like, well, people should just realize it's just two people in love. Of course, I'm with you. I get that. But it's also you have to come objectively to where they are. And, and it takes time sometimes. And when sometimes people are too old to really understand and there's really no value in them knowing the full truth, I don't know if it's totally beneficial. Um, again, this is what this movie has been brought up in me. Um, I just want to talk about Ang Lee as a director. Ang Lee, of course, he directed Brokeback Mountain, he directed Hulk, directed Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I mean, if you look at his career, it's kind of haphazard, but you can see how versatile and how much of a talent he is in just approaching different movies um, without imposing a d directorial style or anything on that. And that's what I've heard other people praise him in the sense that he approaches the story first without having these, you know, um, grandiose uh, visions of like, this is the way it should be. Of course, he's bringing his perspective into it, but he allows for the story to speak first and he, and he therefore interprets it through the story first um, and then and then goes about it. Also in the film, uh, you might see a cameo, so check that out. Uh, you might not notice it, but he's in the film and he has a line of dialogue. I mean, you know, compare, this was really, this was really eye-opening to see that um, Ang Lee directed another movie dealing with gay characters before Brokeback Mountain. I, you know, I did not know that. And in the complete, in the wrong hands, this film could totally be an exploitive and yeah, you you could you can see this as kind of like a tongue in cheek movie, but what what Lee does is explore these characters a lot deeper. Even though the characters could originally come off archetypal, and you can see where things are going, it's a lot more complicated than that. And Ang Lee gives so much more time to each individual character, and we see beyond the archetype. We see how complicated these things are underneath, and he gives every single one of these characters a moment and an opportunity to really see how things are not just the way you feel that they are on the surface. You see the main character make such tremendous mistakes in honor of his parents. He's trying to make his parents happy, but at the same time, he's going about 
it all the wrong way and hurting people along the way. Even even characters like the mother character who I had tremendous disagreements on about her strong values of tradition and not being able to see that things might be a different way. I came around to it and 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 he was able to show me her perspective in ways that I didn't agree with but I completely understood where she might have been coming from. And then there's there's even a scene later on in the film where um they use, use the language barrier uh to comedic effect because the parents don't under, still speak English and there's a fight that happens between two characters and it's funny and it's sad and it's just it just feels so special and 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 you you get to have a sense that they're having this idea of comedy while this very you know serious topic is going on and that's kind of in a microcosm what the film is like and it's on, on the surface there's also a lot of just um interesting ways that um the taiwanese culture you know puts on weddings that are slightly different than the american one that i found to be really interesting to watch and to learn about and as somebody who's not good at guessing where movies go i was i kind of guessed where this movie went until later as the film continues on it completely just sidestep the expectation so if you're even if you're somebody who kind of oh i could see where this movie is going it it might surprise you in in a lot of ways i mean aside i mean in a the gay stuff aside this film also deals with tr the traditional burdens of of the patriarch and and how women are supposed to be um seen and 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 act and that's its own thing the, the film is really great because it it tells the line between being a cautionary tale against people who have these you know concrete views of how tradition should be about how a man and woman should be you know in love and it should be no other way it also breaks these preconceived ideas that i had about how some people are immobile and are are not not able to see things in a different way and it and it kind of puts cracks in that and i thought this film does an excellent job showing, you know, real human beings and and the complexities between what we sometimes perceive to be how things are going to be and they don't end up that way. I know I'm kind of speaking in abstractions because I don't want to give away exactly what happens in the film, but I found it to be a tremendously rewarding experience that completely got my mind going and thinking about things in my own life. Thank you.